Okay, in the last video we implemented our search and uh, we went ahead and tested it and made sure that everything worked. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, hook up the search to the graphical user interface. So we'll have to create a uh, interface for the user to indicate which parts of the quotes they want to search. Uh, we already have a place for them to type in the search criterion. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've already added the interface in. It's pretty straightforward and you understand the HTML. And uh, I'll show you the code markup in a second. But you see I have checkboxes here for text, author, provider, and tags. Just like we did in our search. Here's where the user enters the value. We also have a read-only field that displays how many uh, quotes are returned by a given search. I thought that was kind of a cool thing to add in. Uh, let's look at the HTML markup for this real quick. Yeah, maybe not so quick here. Yeah, that's kind of weird. What's going on here? Whoops, a little brain fart there. I have to go to code view. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's funny. I'm not drinking bourbon right now. I was last night, though, so that's kind of weird. All right, so here's the section of the new HTML markup. You can see I have a uh, div called search box. And, uh, oh, that's a class. I'm not sure why I made that a class instead of a um, ID. Anyhow, uh, we have this class box, search box class. And then that contains all of the markup here. And then each of the... Uh, checkboxes has a label for it. You know how to do that. And then uh, it has an ID. So notice the IDs here. Text search for the text. And by default that one is checked. So notice we have that set to be checked. One thing I did not do in the code yet is I didn't add the logic in to return and tell the user if they have all the boxes unchecked. Because then the search really isn't doing anything. Um, provider search is the next one right here and then um, let's see tag search is right there and then here's that search total I told you about and notice it's read only okay again the size is how many characters so I didn't put size on the check boxes they're always the same size but I do have a size here on my total and since I only have uh, less than a hundred uh, quotes in the quote data set, I've set that to three. So that'll work out pretty good. And then I'm pretty sure that we have a, uh, yeah, the search string. And that has a field size of 30. Those are in characters. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the JS code. Again, I've got this all written. I'm not writing as I go here. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem for you though it's pretty straightforward uh, here's all the additional code and it's right here on the screen and essentially what I do is I grab the uh, search ID so text search author search provider search tag search and then we create an on change function and since this is a um, a checkbox basically a change means that they've either unchecked or checked the box and then if you look this is kind of interesting but previously remember I had these flags that controlled what gets searched and again the default is for the text test flag the test uh, the text search to be on okay so those four boolean variables correspond to these four elements of the GUI and then the syntax is very simple. So basically, uh, this dot checked is a Boolean function that's going to return true or false, and we'll set the flag accordingly. So one thing you want to make sure you understand here is if the user clicks the text search uh, checkbox, and it's already checked then uh, when they change it, it'll be unchecked. And so then this checked will be false and the text test flag will be false okay conversely if it's already unchecked and they now check it this will be true 
and then the flag will be true and then uh, that's it basically it works fine and it just interfaces with the rest of the code that we used so you can see again down here in the search code um, here's where we check to see if we're using the text test flag and um, then we check to see if we have the uh, author test flag and then the provider test flag and then the text test flag and just a quick reminder that if not found match basically is there to prevent you from double searching a quote after you've found a match so for instance if I find a text match here um, found match is true then none of the other searches are going to work otherwise what that would do if it found it again it was add the same quote into the results set and we don't need that so we really don't care if it matches more than one of the criterion as long as it matches at least one okay uh, that's pretty short but really that's all there is to it uh, I guess I should demonstrate the GUI real quick here uh, since we didn't take very long to show this so let me go back here and uh, bring it up in Firefox again and uh, hmm, that's a little odd I don't recall changing anything here hope I didn't screw up the code okay so uh, again we have our author and uh, I'm sorry we have our text set here uh, let's go ahead and uh, do the DOH so that works and now let's try something a little more interesting I think I did uh, MI before and so now let's do the uh, provider one thing I was thinking about here is if you change this it'd be kinda cool if it would just relaunch the uh, current search uh, but I don't have it set up to do that uh, let's go back here real quick that's the easiest way to tell if we have um, so here you can see that Richard Buckminster Fuller gives us an author match and again uh, mistakes in the text gives us a text match so it's definitely doing both the author and provider let's add the tags in uh, oops I'm sorry just the text and the author now we'll add the provider in and uh, I'll redo the MI and let's see if we have any provider matches there I'm thinking we might have a mic in the class here well yeah there's Joel Mercurio for the provider when I just had the M in so that's working and now let's just go ahead and add the tags again I have to redo the search one thing I might do is blank the search field out uh, when the user changes one of the buttons uh, that would tell them that they have to re-enter the search it'd probably be better though to have it just go ahead and launch the search every time you change one of the buttons I'll have to think about that maybe I'll do that in the next video okay uh, so I see we have a text match an author match here um, do we have any tags that have MI in them I'm not seeing that okay um, oh right there the mind so let's see but again what happens is we get we catch the mind here so uh, it doesn't actually do the search for the uh, tag match on that one. Oh, there we go comedy so when I was typing M in it got the comedy okay so uh, hopefully you can see that uh, it's definitely working I now can control the search with a pretty good amount of fine-tuning here uh, so I can indicate if I want to uh, search just the text field or the author or the provider of the tags or any combination thereof oh and I forgot to mention you can see that the total is working and uh, notice as we go ahead and refine the search you can see it uh, lowers the total as the, we get more of a, a search in there so missed now I've got three there you go okay so I hope you're enjoying the course um, it's been kind of fun for me to do this 
and I uh, took the course in a little bit different direction and we got a little bit further along in this technology than I normally do when I teach it. I'm real pleased about that. So uh, this week's lab, you're going to have to implement the search. I'll get that typed up today and uh, we'll see how people do with that. So uh, take care.